The casting process for The Many Loves of Dobie Gillison 1959 was a careful selection of talents that brought the show to life. The producers wanted a perfect blend of humor, charm, and chemistry for the series. Dwayne Hickman was an obvious choice for the role of Dobie Gillies, as he had already made a name for himself in MGM films. His all-American boy next door appeal was ideal for the character. Hickman's audition showcased his comedic timing and ability to connect with the audience, making him the perfect fit. For the role of Dobie's best friend, Maynard G. Krebs, Bob Denver was cast. Denver had previously appeared in a few small roles, but it was his chemistry test with Hickman that sealed the deal. Their natural camaraderie and comedic rhythm were undeniable, making them a memorable duo. The female leads were also carefully chosen Ader Tuesday Weld, who was only 16 at the time, was cast as Zelda, one of Dobie's many loves. Weld's youthful charm and vulnerability made her a standout choice for the role. To play Thalia Menninger, the intelligent and sophisticated love interest, the producers chose Sheila James Kuehl. Kuehl's acting experience in theater and her academic background made her a strong candidate for the role. Her chemistry with Hickman added an extra layer of depth to their on-screen relationship. The casting of the many loves of Dobie Gillis was a crucial part of the show's success. Each actor brought their unique talents and chemistry to the table, creating a memorable and entertaining series that resonated with audiences. And we'll see this through together, you and mom and me. And then how can I lose? I'll go down to that school board and tell him just how I The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was directed by Rod Amatow, who brought a unique vision to the small screen. Amatow's approach was characterized by a focus on humor, timing, and the development of relatable characters. He was influenced by his background in radio and theater, which shaped his directorial style. Amatow's creative influences included the fast-paced dialogue of writers like Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur, as well as the character-driven comedies of the 1930s and 1940s. He aimed to create a sitcom that was both funny and grounded in reality, with characters that audiences could connect with. To achieve this, Amatow worked closely with the cast and crew of Dobie Gillies. He collaborated with the show's writers to develop the characters and storylines, and he encouraged the actors to bring their own ideas and input to the table. Amatow's approach was hands-on, and he was known for his attention to detail and his ability to elicit natural, believable performances from his cast. One of Amatow's key contributions to Dobie Gillis was his focus on visual humor. He used camera angles, facial expressions, and physical comedy to enhance the show's comedic effect. Amatow also employed a variety of editing techniques to create a fast-paced, engaging viewing experience. Despite the show's lighthearted tone, Amatow never lost sight of the importance of character development. He worked to ensure that each character had a distinct personality and backstory, and that their motivations and actions were consistent with their characterizations. In summary, Rod Amatow's directorial vision for Dobie Gillis was marked by his focus on humor, character development, and visual storytelling. His creative influences, collaborative approach, and attention to detail helped to bring the show to life and establish it as a classic of early television. Driving a truck bearing the name Gillis Groceries. Gillis Grocery? Bearded stu- the Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was a groundbreaking TV series that aired from 1959 to 1963. It followed the comedic adventures of Dobie Gillies, a high school student with a love for girls, as he navigated the ups and downs of teenage life. This series had a significant impact on my life. As a young teenager, I found myself relating to Dobie's struggles and triumphs. His search for love and identity resonated with me, and I found myself laughing and crying along with him. I have many cherished memories associated with this TV series. One of my favorites is watching it with my family on Friday nights. We would gather around the TV, snacks in hand, and enjoy the hilarious antics of Dobie and his friends. Do you have a personal experience or memory related to the many loves of Dobie Gillies? We would love to hear about it in the comments below. Throughout this video, we will share some fun, shocking, and sad facts about the show that you may not know. From the surprising backstory of the actors to the show's impact on popular culture, there's a lot to uncover. So, keep watching to learn more. 
your hot jams that you couldn't shake me loose, cool chick. It would be a rather formal party, so naturally we're dressed. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a popular 1959 TV series, was filmed primarily in Hollywood, with some exterior scenes shot on location. The sets, designed to capture the spirit of a 1950s American high school and small town, featured pastel colors and a realistic, relatable style. The show's main location, the fictional Central High School, was a detailed set built on a soundstage. It included classroom, a library, and a bustling student lounge. The set designers paid close attention to detail, from the posters on the walls to the books on the shelves, to create a convincing and engaging environment. Exterior scenes were often filmed on the streets of Hollywood, with the production team going to great lengths to disguise modern elements and maintain the 1950s aesthetic. This included removing contemporary signs, repainting buildings, and even dressing extras in period-appropriate clothing. One of the logistical challenges of filming Dobie Gillis was coordinating the large cast and crew. With numerous speaking roles and a variety of locations, the production required careful planning and scheduling. The team also had to manage the technical aspects of filming, such as lighting, sound, and camera work, while ensuring the performances remain natural and engaging. Despite these challenges, the production of Dobie Gillis was notable for its innovative use of new technologies. The show was one of the first to be filmed using single camera setup, which allowed for greater creative control and a more cinematic look. The production team also employed early forms of video assist, which enabled them to review footage immediately and make adjustments as needed. In all, the production of Dobie Gillis was a complex undertaking that required careful planning, skilled craftsmanship, and innovative techniques. The result was a beloved TV series that captured the spirit of its time and continues to resonate with audiences today. Rush today. Oh, I know how it is with us busy executives, so I'll come right to the point, Junior. I mean, Fred. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a successful teen sitcom, first aired two years after Leave It to Beaver and provided a new perspective on life from a teenager's viewpoint. The show featured a variety of actresses who later became well-known, including Michelle Lee, Sally Kellerman, and Marlo Thomas, who appeared as Dobie's girlfriends. Although I haven't seen many episodes, I have watched a few on the Decades channel and found them to be quite humorous. Unlike Leave it to Beaver, Dobie Gillis breaks the fourth wall and allows the main character, Dobie, to speak directly to the audience. The show ran for four seasons, and two of its stars, Tuesday Well and Warren Beatty, went on to have successful film careers. Beatty, who played the role of Milton Armitage in the first season, became a top box office draw in Hollywood. Recently, 20th Century Fox released the first two seasons of Dobie Gillis in DVD, covering the years 1959 to 1961. In summary, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was an influential teen sitcom that featured talented actresses and launched the careers of Tuesday Weld and Warren Beatty. The show's unique format, with the main character speaking directly to the audience, added an extra dimension to its success. Me a little? Like you. Marianne, I love you. He wants to be an apple and on I a tree. Love you, he wants you should bite him. Main it well. The music in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis plays a crucial role in enhancing the show's narrative and emotional tone. The score and soundtrack were carefully crafted by composers like Jerry Fielding and musicians like The Wrecking Crew to complement the comedic and romantic storylines. Jerry Fielding, the show's primary composer, created a lively and upbeat score that mirrored Dobie's optimistic and energetic personality. Fielding's music was often playful with catchy melodies and quick rhythms that kept pace with the show's fast-paced dialogue and slapstick humor. The Wrecking Crew, a group of highly skilled studio musicians, contributed to the show's soundtrack by providing instrumental accompaniment for many of the musical performances. Their work added an extra layer of authenticity and energy to the show's musical numbers. The music in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was designed to enhance the show's emotional tone, providing a backdrop for the characters' joys, sorrows, and romantic entanglements. The upbeat score and soundtrack helped to create a lighthearted and optimistic atmosphere, while the occasional ballad or slow dance number added a touch of romance and sentimentality. Composers and musicians worked closely together to ensure that the music and the visuals were seamlessly integrated. The result was a soundtrack that not only complemented the narrative, 
but also helped to bring the characters and their stories to life. In interviews, composers and musicians involved in the show have spoken about the challenges and rewards of creating music for the many loves of Dobie Gillies. They have discussed the importance of capturing the show's unique tone and spirit and have shared stories about their collaborations with the show's cast and crew. Overall, the music and the many loves of Dobie Gillis played a vital role in shaping the show's identity and enhancing its emotional impact. The score and soundtrack remain an enduring testament to the talents of the composers and musicians who brought the show to life. We are happy that you and I are finished, finished, finished. I'm delighted to hear you are finished, finished, finished. finished. <laughs> I would... Charles Lane, known for his recurring role as a stern bureaucrat in I Love Lucy, and The Lucy Show also made appearances in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies. Meanwhile, Warren Beatty, one of the six actors to win an Academy Award for Best Director, turned down significant roles in Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid, The Sting, and The Great Gatsby to focus on political endeavors. Instead, he pursued his directorial debut with The Only Game in Town. Besides his directorial work, Beatty is also recognized for his acting career sharing the distinction with other notable figures such as Robert Redford, Clint Eastwood, Mel Gibson, Richard Attenborough, and Kevin Costner. I want you to get hurt. Ah, Lorelai, you're an angel of mercy of Florence Nightingale. One of the most iconic scenes in The Many Loves of Dobie Galissus from the episode Now You See It, where Dobie tries to impress a girl by performing magic tricks. The director, Rod Amatow, used close-up shots to highlight Dobie's nervousness and the magic tricks, adding to the comedic effect. Hickman's performance was spot on, capturing Dobie's desperation and clumsiness. The cinematography, with its clever use of lighting and angles, made the scene even more engaging. This scene had a significant impact on the audience as it showcased Dobie's vulnerability and relatability. Hickman recalled in an interview, people would come up to me and say, I love it when you do magic tricks. It was a simple scene, but it resonated with a lot of people. The scene also demonstrated the show's ability to balance humor and emotion, which contributed to its enduring popularity. Another memorable scene is from the episode The Great Debate, where Dobie and his rival, Milton Armitage, engage in a debate over the value of beauty versus brains. The director used wide shots to capture the intensity of the debate, while close-ups highlighted the character's emotions. Beatty's performance was particularly noteworthy, as he delivered his lines with confidence and charisma. This scene left a lasting impact on audiences, as it presented a thought-provoking topic in a humorous way. Beatty's performance was also a standout as it showcased his acting prowess and marked the beginning of his successful career. The scene remains one of the most memorable moments in the series, demonstrating the show's ability to tackle relevant issues while maintaining its comedic tone. Ed Shrinker, why, why he's as normal as, as, as me? <laughs> Jack Albertson, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, had a familial connection to the entertainment industry. He was the uncle of George England, making him the uncle-in-law of Cloris Leachman from 1953 to 1978. Daryl Hickman, who also appeared in the series, had an actor for a brother. His sibling, Dwayne Hickman, starred as the titular character in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies. The two had previously shared the screen in Captain Eddie and The Happy Years. William Shaller, another cast member, had a notable career beyond the series. He appeared in the original Twilight Zone TV series, its 1985 revival, and the movie adaptation. Shallard's career in television was extensive, spanning several decades in various genres. Hey, the conquering hero returns. I bet you knocked him dead down in that store, huh? No. You did great, huh? Well, not exactly. Since I the Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 TV series, left a significant cultural and social impact. The show resonated with audiences due to its relatable characters and themes, particularly focusing on the romantic pursuits and everyday challenges of teenager Dobie Gillies. This series is often credited with influencing pop culture, as it was one of the first to delve into the lives of teenagers with such depth and detail. Dobie Gillies' character paved the way for future TV 
and movie teenage protagonists, inspiring shows, and films that explore the trials and tribulations of adolescence. Furthermore, the many loves of Dobie Gillis contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It tackled issues such as social status, ambition, and the complexities of interpersonal relationships. By addressing these topics, the series encouraged viewers to reflect on their own values and experiences. In essence, the many loves of Dobie Gillis struck a chord with its audience, leaving a lasting impact on pop culture and fostering conversations around important social and cultural themes. Of this neighborhood. Yeah, they're pretty outcasts. Well, one in particular, a Maynard Krebs. A Maynard G. Krebs. Yeah, he's pretty open. William Shallert, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, had a notable connection to director Joe Dante, appearing in five of his films. These include Twilight Zone, the movie, Gremlins, Inner Space, Matinee, and the Second Civil War. Ron Howard, another cast member, was once rumored to be considering a film adaptation of The Devil Created Man in His Own Image, a British novel by Philip Stevenson, for the American audience. The adaptation would have focused on the theme of abuse of others. Charles Lane, who also starred in the series, had a rich history in the entertainment industry. He began his career on stage in the late 1920s and was a founding member of SAG, attending its first public meeting in 1933. Well, those phonies in the Silver Spoon Club wanted to play rough and push my father around. Okay. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show was praised for its innovative and creative approach to storytelling, focusing on the romantic pursuits of the main character, Dobie Gillies, played by Dwayne Hickman. Notable TV critic Cleveland Amory from the Saturday Review commended the show for its freshness and originality, highlighting the excellent cast and clever scripts. The show's ability to appeal to both young and old audiences was also noted, making it a standout in the world of television at the time. The series was nominated for several awards, including two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Comedy Series in 1960 and 1961. Actresses Tuesday Weld and Sheila James Kuehl, who played two of Dobie's love interests, were also nominated for Primetime Emmy Awards for their performances. The show's nominations and awards are a testament to the hard work and dedication of everyone involved in its production. It marked a significant milestone in the careers of the cast and crew, solidifying their places in television history. The accolades received by the many loves of Dobie Gillis serve as a reminder of the show's enduring impact and legacy in the world of television. The series remains a beloved classic, cherished by audiences of all ages for its wit, charm, and timeless appeal. How do you do? Nice place you have here. We like it here. Have an apple. It'll save you the... Dwayne Hickman, the actor known for his role in the many loves of Dobie Gillies, is of Swedish, German, English, and Scots-Irish descent. His co-star, Tuesday Weld, has recently made headlines for purchasing a 1-8 million home in the Hollywood Hills after years of living in Colorado. Bob Denver, who played the character of Maynard G. Krebs on the show, holds the record for playing the same character, Gilligan, on seven different series. These include Gilligan's Island, The New Adventures of Gilligan, Gilligan's Planet, The New Gidget, Alf, Baywatch, and Mego. In summary, the cast of The Many Loves of Dobie Gillishes had an interesting career trajectory, with Dwayne Hickman's and Tuesday Wells' recent property purchases, and Bob Denver's unique achievement in playing the same character on multiple series. Push to get the prospect to put down his money. I'll take a dozen. Never mind. <laughs> the same technique that sells a refrigerator during the making of The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, the camaraderie among the cast was palpable. Dwayne Hickman, who played the titular role, and Bob Denver, who portrayed Maynard G. Krebs, became close friends off screen. Their friendship often led to unscripted moments of laughter, which added to the show's charm. The show's creator, Max Shulman, was known for his wit and humor. He often visited the set, much to the delight of the cast and crew. Shulman would sometimes ad lib lines, keeping the actors on their toes in the atmosphere light. The show's theme song, Young and Foolish, was a hit single in 1959. The song's popularity led to a boost in the show's ratings, making it a staple of American television. The song's singer, Jimmy Rogers, even made a guest appearance on the show. 
Behind the scenes, the show's costume designer, Bobby Mannix, played a crucial role in creating the distinctive look of the characters. She was responsible for the iconic beatnik attire of Maynard G. Krebs, which included a slouch beanie, torn jeans, and a messy sweater. The show set, designed by Hollywood veteran George Patrick, was a replica of a typical American town square. The set was so detailed that it even included a working fountain. The set's design added to the show's charm, making it feel like a small town America that viewers could relate to. In conclusion, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was a show that not only entertained audiences, but also provided a glimpse into the experiences of the cast and crew during its production. From the friendship between the lead actors to the wit of the show's creator, the making of the show was as entertaining as the show itself. But if you and this, 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 Dobie. this Dobie love each other, I am proud to welcome him. Bob Denver, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, worked with the cat actor Orangey on two different shows, including Gilligan's Island, Frank Phelan, who played a taxi driver in the Palm Beach story, and It's a Wonderful Life, also had a role in Dobie Gillies. Meanwhile, Tuesday Weld, who was considered for the role of Mistress Lovett in a film version of Sweeney Todd, passed on the part, which was later given to Helena Bonham Carter in the 2000s version. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A penny saved is a penny earned. <laughs> The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 television series, holds a significant place in film history due to its innovative approach to situational comedy and relatable characters. This groundbreaking show explored the romantic pursuits and everyday challenges of its protagonist, Dobie Gillies, and his friends, tackling topics such as love, social status, and personal growth. The series is particularly noteworthy for its impact on future filmmaking as it pioneered the genre of teen-centric programming. By focusing on the lives of high school students, the many loves of Dobie Gillis paved the way for popular shows like Beverly Hills, 90210, and Gilmore Girls. The series also introduced the character Maynard G. Krebs, played by Bob Denver, who would later gain fame as Gilligan in Gilligan's Island. Moreover, the show inspired several subsequent works, including the 1977 film The Resurrection of Dobie Gillies, which brought the characters back to the big screen. The series' influence can also be seen in various literary adaptations, such as the 1994 novel Dobie Gillis Collected Stories by Max Schulman, the show's creator. In recent years, the many loves of Dobie Gillis has been celebrated for its progressive representation of women with strong and intelligent female characters like Zelda and Thalia. This positive portrayal of women in media has inspired modern storytellers to continue creating complex and well-rounded female characters. Overall, the many loves of Dobie Gillishes left an indelible mark on film history, shaping the future of television and inspiring generations of filmmakers and audiences alike. Neighborhood for one grocery store, poor house, here we come. Oh, Mrs. Frobish's baby's having... Warren Beatty, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, has an interesting family background. His mother, Kathleen Kareen, was a drama teacher from Nova Scotia, Canada, while his father, Era Owens Beatty, a PhD, of educational psychology, public school administrator, and real estate dealer, hailed from Virginia. Douglas Dumrill, another actor in the series, had an unusual past before his acting career took off. At one point, he owned an onion farm but sold it after making his Broadway debut in Macbeth in 1924. Douglas Dumrill's acting career was quite impressive, with appearances in six Oscar Best Picture nominees, including I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang in 1932, The Lives of a Bengal Lancer in 1935, Naughty Marietta in 1935, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town in 1936, Julius Caesar in 1953, and The Ten Commandments in 1956. Poor Maynard, what's going to happen to you? Do you know what ice mechanical... Never mind! Maynard, you absolutely determined... William Schaller, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, had a successful career as a voiceover announcer, including being the longtime voice of Oscar Mayer in TV commercials. Warren Beatty, another cast member, had a notable personal life, living with Julie Christie from 1967 to 1974. Jack Albertson, who also appeared in the series, is one of nine actors to have achieved the triple crown of acting, winning an Oscar, Emmy, and Tony. 
His accomplishment places him in a select group of highly respected actors in the industry. What are you gonna do? There I was with two girls more or less ape about me. On the one hand was Gloria Mundy, one of the sweetest kids. Tuesday Well, known for her role in the many loves of Dobie Gillies, has Scottish ancestry, and is distantly related to Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. John Fiedler, who also appeared in the series, gained recognition for his portrayal of Homer on NBC Radio's The Aldrich Family from 1950 to 1953. Ron Howard, another cast member, has an impressive acting resume, having played Winthrop Paru in The Music Man and the title role in Huckleberry Finn, both roles originally played by Eddie Hodges. A poem that began... I love you with all my power, I love you with all my might. Remember that poem, Doby? Yeah. Warren Beatty, a renowned actor and filmmaker, had a significant relationship with Julie Christie, whom he met at the Royal Command performance of Born Free in 1966. Before Christie, Beatty dated Leslie Karen, and it was Karen who introduced Beatty to Christie. After a rocky start, they became lovers and made their first public appearance together at a sneak preview of Bonnie and Clyde. Their relationship lasted several years, but they eventually parted ways due to their differing ideas about the future. Beatty is one of seven men to receive Academy Award nominations for Best Actor and Best Director for the same film, Heaven Can Wait, and Reds. His work in these films, as well as his other contributions to the film industry, has left an indelible mark on cinema. Joyce Jameson, another actor in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, graduated from UCLA with a Bachelor of Arts degree. Her education and dedication to her craft were important aspects of her career in the entertainment industry. These individuals each brought their unique talents and contributions to the world of entertainment, leaving behind a lasting impact on the industry and audiences alike. Dr. Burkhart, she's your sister? Yes, you know her? Yes, Bow Wow, and we're doomed. William Schaller, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, shared his experiences in the book They Fought in the Creature Features. Before his TV career, Schallard had already appeared in three films nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, The Grapes of Wrath, The Human Comedy, and Network. A young actor in the series, Daryl Hickman, also had an impressive filmography. He featured in three movies nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, including The Grapes of Wrath, The Human Comedy, and Network. Tuesday Weld, another cast member, gained popularity in the series. Her name was even mentioned in Tiny Tim's recording of George M. Cohan's song, That I'd Be Satisfied With Life. In the 1968 album, God Bless Tiny Tim, he changed the line if Hetty Green would only be my wife to if Tuesday Weld would only be my wife. This unexpected mention shows Weld's influence during that time. Well, he's an aristocrat and you are a commoner. Oh, me too. I'm more commoner than anybody. That's exactly the point, Mrs. Un Bob Denver, known for his bumbling character on The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, is quite different in real life. Contrary to his on-screen persona, he is serious and composed. Warren Beatty, who appeared in a few episodes of the show, has maintained friendships with notable political figures such as John McCain, Nancy Reagan, and Ronald Reagan. In fact, Reagan, as president, invited Beatty to screen his film Reds at the White House. Yvonne Craig, another cast member, expressed her displeasure when she learned that Barbara Gordon, the character she played on the Batman television series, would become paraplegic after being shot by the Joker in the graphic novel, The Killing Joke. She even wrote a letter to DC Comics to convey her disappointment. <laughs> Blood is thicker than water. <laughs> Dig in, sweetie pie. Charles Lane, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, left a lasting impression on animation. Animators for The Simpsons designed the blue-haired lawyer, who often represents Mr. Burns, to resemble Lane. Dwayne Hickman, who played Dobie Gillies, has a connection to the acting world through his family. He is the ex-brother-in-law of actress Pamela Lincoln and brother-in-law of Linda Farmer Hickman. Tuesday Weld, who also starred in the series, has stepped away from the spotlight. As of 2010, she was living in the Aspen area and has turned down acting roles for over a decade. Despite being offered mother roles on hit series, she prefers to focus on her writing and spending time with her daughter and granddaughter. Her agents still send her scripts weekly,
but she looks younger than her years and has chosen to enjoy a quieter life. I find myself looking at everything altogether different. Mr. Tarantino, that's a most impressive... Bob Denver, who played the role of Dobie Gillies, had a love for sailing in real life, but he dreaded renting boats due to the constant jokes about a certain three-hour tour. On a different note, Frank Phelan, who played Dobie's father, was a father himself to actresses Carol Phelan and Kay Phelan. Lastly, Warren Beatty, who played a minor role in the series, has a diverse heritage with English, Scottish, and some Irish ancestry. His parents hailed from Front Royal, Virginia, and North Sydney, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Forget which. In the popular 1959 TV series, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, actress Yvonne Craig worked alongside Dwayne Hickman not just once, but twice both in the show and in the 1965 film Ski Party. Craig's influence extended beyond Dobie Gillies as she played the iconic role of Batgirl Barbara Gordon in the TV series Batman. Interestingly, Craig's natural dark hair color led the writers to modify the character's appearance, having Barbara Gordon don a red wig as part of her Batgirl costume. In other news, Jack Albertson, who also starred in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, experienced a loss in his personal life. Albertson's widow, June Wallace Thompson, passed away in 2015 at her home in Los Angeles, California. Unfortunately, the cause of her death remains undisclosed. My dear, I shall love you with every fiber of my being for as long as I live. Will you be my wife? Charles Lane, known for his role as Dobie Gillies' boss in the 1959 TV series, had a mother who lived to be 99, passing away in 1973. Warren Beatty, who played a recurring character on the show, was honored with a day of his filmography on Turner Classic Movies in August 2020. Tuesday Weld, who also appeared on the show, was set to star in performance in The Stepford Wives, but ultimately did not. Lane, Beatty, and Weld all have interesting post Dobie Gillis careers, each with their own unique stories. Mark. You, Mr. Krebs, on your first day? Mr. G does it. That's Dobie's father, Mr. G. When he does it, goes down to the. Hash Douglas Dumrell's family, Douglas Dumrell, from the 1959 TV series The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, had two sons with Jesse Lawson, John Lawson Dumrell of Los Angeles and Douglas Murray Dumrell of San Francisco. Hash Tuesday Weld's early career Tuesday Weld, known for her role in the 1959 TV series The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, attended a professional children's school in New York with Sandra D, Carol Lindley, and Lorna Gilliam. They frequently appeared in the American Girl magazine and even appeared together in an ad for Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Hash Dwayne Hickman's passing Dwayne Hickman, a notable figure from the 1959 TV series The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, passed away on the same day as comedian Bob Saget, who also made his mark on television. Oh, pie. There's also, I found out, such a thing as too much truth. Like hi, Mr. G. Warren Beatty, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, tested for the part of Tony in West Side Story. Frank Phelan, who also appeared in the series, had a distinguished film career, including two Best Picture winners and eight other nominees. William Schaller, who played Martin Lane in The Patty Duke Show, was ranked among TV Guide's Top 50 Greatest TV Dads. His character's enduring popularity is a testament to Schaller's acting prowess. In the 1959 TV series The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, Raymond Bailey appeared without his toupee for many roles before joining the Beverly Hillbillies in 1962. Actress Tuesday Weld replaced Sharon Tate for the role of Christian in The Cincinnati Kid in 1965. Interestingly, Warren Beatty, who also starred in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, received 10 offers of football scholarships after high school, but turned them all down. put his finger right on the problem. Where was I gonna get some good hard cash to invest? Sheila James Kuehl, 
who played Zelda on the many loves of Dobie Gillies, went on to graduate from Harvard Law School. Bob Denver's character, Maynard G. Krebs, served as the inspiration for the cartoon character Shaggy Rogers in the Scooby-Doo series. Actress Tuesday Weld, known for her role as Thalia Menninger on Dobie Gillies, portrayed the character Selena Cross in the movie sequel Return to Peyton Place, a role originally played by Hope Lange in Peyton Place. Well, we just won't tell him. Well, I fear he already knows. He's standing on the other side of you holding a revolver. Ron Howard, known as the father-in-law of Seth Gable, had a notable connection to the TV series, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies. Interestingly, two wealthy characters in the series, Milton Armitage and Chatsworth Osborne Jr., have their names derived from streets in St. Paul, Minnesota, where series creator Max Shulman grew up. Shulman's Selby Dale neighborhood influence is evident in the show, with Selby Avenue intersecting with Milton Street followed by Chatsworth Street. In a remarkable display of political activism, actor Warren Beatty, who played a role in the series, organized it together with McGovern Concert in 1972, featuring Barbara Streisand, Carol King, James Taylor, and even reuniting Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel. This event marked a significant moment in political fundraising history. Homemaker Krebs and Gillis. Well, sorry to see you out. <laughs> the Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1950s television series, is based on a collection of short stories by Max Schulman, which were first published in Cosmopolitan magazine and later as a book in 1951. The show's main character, Dobie Gillies, is named after and modeled after the character in Schulman stories. Ron Howard, who played the role of Dobie's best friend, went on to establish a successful career in the entertainment industry. He founded two production companies, Major H Productions and Imagine Entertainment, which have produced numerous films and television shows. Warren Beatty, who played the role of Dobie's rival, also had a notable career in the entertainment industry. His daughter, Kathleen, transitioned to male at the age of 14 and changed her name to Stephen Arabidi. In summary, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a popular 1950s television series, was based on a series of short stories by Max Schulman. The show's main character, Dobie Gillies, was played by Ron Howard, who later became a successful producer and director. Warren Beatty, who played Dobie's rival, also had a notable career in the entertainment industry. Beatty's daughter, Kathleen, transitioned to male and changed her name to Stephen Arabidi. Tuesday Welp, known for her role in the many loves of Dobie Gillies, has had a significant impact in the entertainment industry. Singer Walter Egan even recorded a song called Tuesday Weld as a tribute to her. Dwayne Hickman, who played the lead role in the many loves of Dobie Gillies, had his real-life brother, Daryl Hickman, make a few appearances on the show as his character's brother, Davey. Charles Lane, who frequently played the role of a grumpy old man in various productions, was a good friend of Lucille Ball. Despite often being cast as her foil, they had a long-standing friendship that began when they both worked in RKO musicals. Keep standing there with your mouth open to come along and yank a couple of teeth. <laughs> don't, don't. Dwayne Hickman gained public recognition through his role as Chuck McDonald in The Bob Cummings Show and his starring turn as Dobie Gillis in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies. To accurately portray Maynard G. Krebs, a beatnik character, Hickman researched the beat generation philosophy by visiting local coffee shops and hipster hangouts. A notable figure associated with the show is Warren Beatty, who is the godfather of Richard Silbert's daughter, Daisy Alexandra Silbert Torres. Beatty's friendship with Silbert, a production designer, highlights the connections formed during the production of the series. Exterior, there beats the, the pure and simple heart of a child. For shame, Dobie. But Mr. Pop now, Dobie, you... In the classic television series, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, several memorable characters and running gags are featured. For instance, Maynard, a laid-back character, has a unique reaction to the word work. He responds by saying work, in a high-pitched voice, while jumping slightly, even when he himself uses the word in a sentence. Additionally, Maynard appears suddenly with the line you rang. 
when someone mentions lack of motivation, poor personal appearance, or hygiene. The show also features veteran actor Charles Lane, who appeared in seven Oscar Best Picture nominees, including You Can't Take It With You, which won Best Picture in 1938. Another notable aspect of the show is the way Dobie's love interest, Zelda, is portrayed. The audience knows Dobie loves her because whenever she wrinkles up her nose, Dobie involuntarily does the same in response. These details add depth and humor to the show, making it a beloved classic among older audiences. The plan of a team consists of three students all seated at the same bench. You three will be a team. If you have fond memories of the many loves of Dobie Gillies, we'd love to hear them. This 1959 TV series not only entertained viewers, but also left a personal impact on many. Whether it made you laugh, cry, or think about life in a new way, we'd enjoy hearing your story. Perhaps you were inspired by the show's memorable characters or its exploration of teenage life. Maybe you even felt seen or understood by its portrayal of the human experience. Whatever your connection to the many loves of Dobie Gillies, we'd be thrilled to have you share it with us. By engaging with this post, you can help create a vibrant community of cinema lovers. Whether you choose to like, share, or comment, your involvement matters. And if you're not already a subscriber, we hope you'll consider joining us for more explorations into the world of classic television. Together, we can celebrate the enduring power of storytelling and the impact it has on our lives. Yes, this is Elvin. Lucy. Lucy? <laughs> Lucy who?